we'll get started and we will continue to invite people as they as they enter. Uh, hello, my name is Ari. I'm the head of communications at Zengo. And it's a pleasure to see so many familiar faces or to uh, see names that I've definitely seen on emails or, or people that we've uh, interacted with before. We're really excited to have all of you here today. Here's how we're going to do it. Uh, I'll give a quick overview of today's agenda and discussion, talk a little bit about Zengo and why we do what we do for those of you who are relatively new to the, the Zengo world. Um, then I'll turn it over to Oriel Ohayon, our CEO and co-founder, who's going to officially launch this product, uh, talk about it, and then do a demo of it. And then we'll turn it over to question and answer led by uh, our CTO and co-founder, Tal Baeri. Um, during this presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to start uh, writing them in the chat. Don't hold back. I see some people are already introducing themselves. That's amazing. If you also have a question, but you don't want to share it publicly, feel free to DM me the questions. I'll collect them during this process. We hope that this is more of a conversation than just a presentation. So let's get started. Um, first of all, we know that there's a really amazing group of people in this room. We have journalists, founders of NFT projects and dApps, people who work in Web3 infrastructure. And it's clear to, to all of us that as an industry, we have a massive problem. Um, what I mean? Well, right now there are about, what, 160 million people who have some sort of crypto asset or engaged in, in, in the crypto ecosystem, Web3 ecosystem. But based on current adoption rates, we expect to hit a billion people with a B by 2030. Right, that's the beauty of uh, exponentials. As an industry, we promise this decentralized, self-empowered future, um, a place where at the center you have a crypto wallet. And this wallet will hold your digital assets, your digital collectibles, and it will help you verify your digital identity to the entire ecosystem that we're building. But it has a massive vulnerability. Most crypto wallets use a private key as a single point of failure. And where has that gotten us? In the last decade, over 10, uh, I'm sorry, over a hundred billion dollars has been lost or stolen because of private key mismanagement. And that's just for Bitcoin, right? When we start talking about other blockchains, it's clearly more than that. So the current architecture needs to be improved upon. And as an industry, we cannot onboard the next billion people like this, right? It has to be safer. Uh, the user experience has to be simple, accessible, and fundamentally more secure than most people are experiencing right now. So that's why we're here today, and that's why we're super excited to, to talk about what we're building. Um, now I'd like to make a bold statement. Zango is the most secure wallet in Web3. Uh, why do I feel comfortable making this statement? For two reasons, one of which you probably know about and one of which we're going to discuss today. So reason number one, Zango, unlike essentially every other wallet in the market, doesn't use private keys as its way to self-custody. Instead, we use MPC, um, right? It's not a new technology. It's been used at the institutional level to custody billions of dollars of crypto assets, but we're the first to bring it to average users, which is a big deal. We're the first, we're certainly not the only, right? And we've already heard Coinbase recently announced that they have a Web3 browser that's powered by MPC. We'll probably see this in the future. But what this means is a better user experience that's fundamentally more secure. So the $100 billion of Bitcoin that's been lost or stolen because of private key mismanagement, well, that can't happen to you if you use Zango. But all of us as an industry have still been facing another challenge. And that's what we're going to focus on today. And that is Web3 security and transaction security. I've got one last metric and then, and then I'll move on. Right. So in 2022 alone, $2 billion of crypto has been stolen in Web3 hacks. And most of the time, these are transactions that people actually approve in their own crypto wallets. But they approved these transactions because they weren't clear what they were actually approving. And so that's what we're here to discuss, right? Crypto wallets are the last line of defense for a user. They need to be clearer when they message what people are actually doing in those wallets. And so now I'm delighted to turn it over to Oriel, our CEO and co-founder, to talk about the product that we're launching today. Oriel, on to you. Thanks. Thanks, Ari. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, glad to be here. And uh, after the American accent, you, uh, you're welcomed by a French uh, American accent. Uh, 
So at Zango, we like to say uh, and do things very, very simply uh, and all that wrapped into an envelope of security. And uh, in, in this industry, it's really, really hard to do things simply. It, the, 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 the short path to security is usually complexity. And so today we are introducing what we believe is a new standard in security that should exist, to be honest, everywhere. Uh, but uh, it's not existing yet everywhere. It's existing in Zango, and we want to present it to you. We call that the Web3 Firewall. Uh, the, the, the name for that is ClearSign. And this is a new way for people to experiment safely how they interact with Web3 applications. So uh, there will be two parts to my, uh, to my presentation, and I promise it will not be very long. Um, the first part will be just a generic presentation explaining the problem and how uh, we solving that today. And as Ari mentioned, it's live and you can see and you can test it and you will see some cases that you can already see uh, today existing. Uh, and you can try that for yourself. The second part, which is my favorite part, is the live demonstration, right? It's, be it's better to see in action. And so I will share with you my phone screen. You will see and we will see together how it works. There is no tricks. Uh, it's a real live demonstration. Hopefully, there won't be any failure <laughs> because you know the love demonstrations, but it should work. So I will start with that. There will obviously be room for questions. You can, as I mentioned, use the chat to uh, to ask your questions as the presentation goes. And after that, uh, Tal, my co-founder, which is right here at least on my side, uh, will get into a more technical deep dive and explain things with more technical point of view. Uh, and of course, we'll be here to answer your questions. So let's get started. Let me share my presentation. And I will try to go uh, very quickly on that because I assume that most of you are very savvy people in crypto. And so there are many things I don't need to explain to you and I already made already a great introduction. So clear sign, this is what we're introducing today. This Web3 firewall is a new, simple and safe way for crypto wallet users and today only Zango uh, users to sign web free dApp transactions. What's the problem that we're solving? Let's say it in very simple terms. Web free users lose their assets. That's the problem. It's very simple to explain. And the reason it's happening is because they are using traditional crypto wallets, whether they are mobile wallets, hardware wallets, software wallets with applications, billions of dollars have been lost, right? And so, I mean, we all know what uh, signing with an app is, but let's just remind the process. You visit an application, can be any type of application, can be a marketplace of NFTs, um, a crypto lending service, a decentralized exchange, etc. You're going to interface and connect with that application. So you're going to typically use a form of connectivity with that application. So. It's going can be an extension. It can be Wallet Connect, which is a very popular interface. This is something that we are using, or some other form of connectivity. And then you are you have associated your backpack, your wallet to that application, and you can start to do stuff. The problem is that increasingly, especially for, during the last years, cre uh, signing transactions, meaning connecting your wallet to application, as becoming increasingly. Uh, risky and and dangerous and and I will to, to say it in very very simple way again I think it's so super important to always try to simplify the explanation of a problem is because users do not understand what they sign up for it's as simple as that it's impossible and you will see it in the demos that the way that crypto wallets are built no matter how secure they are have made it impossible for users to understand what they're signing up for and so crypto used to be about trading only you remember in the early days, for those who are OGs here, uh, there was not such a problem. The problem was just like, how can I protect my private key? But as the, trans the, the crypto economy is becoming more transactional and more or built around the application, what we now call Web3, signing transaction is becoming really, really common. Another thing that has changed during the past years is that the computer used to be the only platform for interacting with crypto. Now you're interacting with crypto with a mobile phone more and more. Right and uh, and and also something that was not existing before is hardware wallets were not existing at the at the very days of crypto um, and and so 
crypto wallets like hardware wallets have not adapted to the reality of letting people understand what they're signing up for, although they have screens, those screens are very, very tiny. And so those are some examples of how signing a web free transactions can be really, really dangerous. And maybe Tal will deep dive more into like all the risks that you're exposing yourself to, but they are very common. And if you uh, are connected to any social media platform, you will not miss a week without uh, one of those events, right? A phishing scam, a, sales, a social uh, account being taken over last week alone, uh, or this week, I can't remember, but uh, Anthony, um, Bill Murray's wallet was uh, was hacked on his NFT platform, uh, his NFT collection, uh, that contract that getting taken over, Rugpull project, malicious applications. I mean, the list goes on and on and, and, and it's, never, it's never finished. And there are basically two reasons that the user are exposed to their private key the the the, the seat what you could call a seat phrase takeover uh, which can happen on any form of wallet including hardware and abusive permissions meaning when you're signing uh, with an application which is going to make you sign something that you either do not understand or is way beyond what you should approve um, so those are some live examples of accidents and scams that have happened in the past you know fake airdrops social account hacks rogue NFTs, rogue sign, all those are not invented. They were live during the past months, but the, the list goes on and on and it's impossible to, to list them all. And it's also important to uh, understand that and to say it and to repeat it. You are not immune to those scams, even with what is considered as a safe standard like hardware wallets, because again, it's about what you understand, what you sign in for, and, and not about how the private key is necessarily protected. So. Uh, uh, the problem is that people do not understand what they sign up for, and worse, they just also do not understand what they do not understand. They cannot understand what they cannot understand because A, this industry is new, and most people are not savvy enough, including people who are working in that industry. And, and quite frankly, what it feels right now is that Web3 feels like you're driving a car, and you don't have brakes and you don't have airbags, and it's going to end up like this guy on the on the Jeep, right? It's going to end up in a bad situation. Um, right. So this is, for example, how uh, you know popular wallets uh, look today when you're signing a transaction for all sorts of applications. I mean, unless you have a computer, a PhD in computer science, it's really, truly really impossible to understand what is happening on those screens. But that's a typical example of a, a transaction signing. It's unreadable. It's unverified. It's unclear. And also, it's unprotected. It just lets you go again without breaks and without any embargo. And it goes without saying, uh, this insanity cannot 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 go on. It has to stop. We, Zango as a company, has decided to declare war to this situation and to uh, actually win that. So the question is, can we can we make a wallet at the same time highly usable and safe to uh, transact? And this is why today we are introducing clear sign uh, which uh, you know could be considered as a firewall for web free wallets so what it is well basically clear sign is doing three things uh, it's an anti-phishing uh, a service it uh, verifies the uh, the signature of the dApp that you are actually using to make sure that you are actually using the dApp that you intend to use it protects the uh, the seed and makes the connectivity seedless and keyless and it's also going to block in certain cases the transaction when uh, we are uh, a, a getting to a high level of confidence that this uh, dap is malicious uh, so this typical path of how for example you're going to interact with collabland which is a, a very fairly popular type of application that you can find on discord to authentify that you own an nft and a wallet so you're going through that path and at some point you connect with your your wallet uh, this is the experience that you would have, for example, in ClearSign. You would immediately understand that which app you're going to interact with. You're going to understand that this app has been uh, verified and the message is very, very easily readable. But I want to go through all the cases of what we're doing. So the first thing that uh, ClearSign is doing is it raises the transaction awareness to the user. It makes you read and understand and sometimes think twice, right? And so without going to too many level of details and technical explanations, it's a very, very simple screen, sometimes two screens, that where you can see exactly what you are signing up for 
and uh, that introduces also an act of sliding to confirm, which in our research is way more um, uh, is, is way more efficient for users than a, just a tap to confirm. Uh, we're using, uh, by the way, three type of colors. Uh, there is um, uh, orange for uh, green for verified, orange for um, uh, our attention is required and red when something bad is happening. So, uh, for example, this is the case of an app and you will see it in the demo that is asking a very, very aggressive type of permission. It's basically asking you to give an unlimited access to uh, to your um, a, a, a very aggressive access to your wallet, meaning it can withdraw way more than you would like for that particular action. And when you go through that step, not only we tell you once, we tell you twice, right? We force you to be exposed twice to that message before you really want to to do it. So, so we make like it really hard. Uh, we make it harder for you to approve that transaction. We don't block it, we don't prevent it, but we make it harder for you to uh, to go through that. So again, there is the green cases where we verify the contract and we verify the action. Uh, there is the orange cases where we raise the awareness. Uh, if your attention is required and there is the red one, we think it's an extreme kind of uh, abuse and we will explain later technically how it happens. Um, so um, I, I want to go as quickly as possible to the demonstration because I think this is really the exciting part. And I think the beauty of what we are bringing here is the radical simplicity for something that is traditionally extremely complex. Uh, just before that, I want to highlight a few things that we are not introducing today what ClearSign is not. We're not introducing an insurance against crypto acts, right? This is not something that guarantees your money back if something wrong happens. Um, and as a reminder, there's never 100% guarantee of no risk, no, can, no scam. That doesn't exist. That will never exist, not in this planet and not on Mars, even if Elon Musk works really hard on it. Uh, it's not a replacement for awareness. Um, there are certain things that users need to be educated of no matter how much we're going to help them be aware, right? If you're given a car that can goes up to 200 kilometers with an airbag and a safety belt, you can still die, right? Doesn't matter how safe is the car. The same thing goes in crypto. And it's not a protection also against extreme social engineering cases of, you know, rogue OTC or peer-to-peer -peer deals. Those cases are human interaction level and it's like really impossible to protect them clear sign doesn't do that and it's really your human judgment that can help you in those cases so stay zen uh, i think this is time for a demo I, I don't know if we want to take questions right now i really i haven't monitored all uh, the reactions yet but i want to go into yeah, questions would, as soon as i would say um as oriel prepares for the demo and um stops sharing his screen sets it all up if you have questions, feel free to start writing them. I actually already got one as a DM. So I'm collecting the questions. We'll jump into those as soon as the demo is over. Um, feel free to start thinking about what you'd like to ask. We, we will take written questions as well as folks are welcome to come up and, and ask as well. So uh, in a second, you should be able to see my actually my entire screen and the, the screen will be split in two parts. On one side, you will see um, uh, my browser, my Chrome browser. Uh, with the dApps that I'm going to use. And on the right, you're actually going to see uh, my uh, my live phone. Let's see if you are actually seeing it. All right. Okay, so you, you should be able to see here. No, just a second. There you go. So you should be able to see here on the right, I'm going to put it on the right, my, my Zango wallet. As you can see, it's pretty sexy with a cool background. And I have $10 of Ethereum on it, so I'm extremely rich, uh, uh, at least uh, virtually rich. And on the left, you can see my browser where here I have Etherscan and then uh, here I have uh, Uniswap. So what you see here is exactly what I have here on my phone. I don't know if you can see it. Like there's no trick. It's exactly the same, the same, uh, the same behavior in real time. Okay. So uh, coming back to the wallet. So uh, well, first, I want to show you what happens when we want to give to a user the confidence that is actually using the DAP that he's using. Right there, as you know, there are a lot of uh, of cases of app impersonations and app that look like the app that you want to use and 
you know, sometimes a Discord channel can be taken over and they put a, a fake URL. It looks nearly like the same URL of the app. It also, the app also looks really the same, but how can you be certain that you are actually using the app that you want? It's the first level of information, a level of confidence that you are using the wallet that you should be, uh, the, the, the app that you should be using. So here I'm on the original Uniswap app. And uh, there is nothing right now, and I'm not connected yet, but I'm going to connect my wallet. So on Zango, we use a Wallet Connect, right? Everything here is built on top of Wallet Connect, which we believe is today the best protocol for connecting applications to uh, wallets because it's agnostic of the browser, agnostic of the OS, and it's way safer than an extension. So that's what we are using. So I'm going to connect here my Zango wallet um, and select Wallet Connect. So I'm using the QR code here. And the story uh, is simple. So here I'm I'm connecting to the app. At this stage, there is no um, particular uh, danger. I'm just like authenticating to uh, to the app, and I'm not yet making any particular action. Now my wallet is authenticated, and I can now make a swap. Right. So let's assume that I want to uh, swap zero zero one ETH for um, some uh, USDC. Okay. So I'm going to get here the order, the order to swap. So pay attention what's going to happen on my phone. I have here the summary. Okay. And on the phone, I'm going to have now a very, very simple screen that tells me that I am on Uniswap and that this a verified Uniswap transaction. So I getting this level of confidence. If I want to know more, I can tap on that and I have more details uh, that, uh, that that can help me understand and inform me better on what is happening there. Uh, you don't need to because you are in a green green area. It's a bit like a um, you know red light on the street, but you can see the name of the app and the contract, and you can actually go to an explorer to look further. And here, I'm I'm not going to perform the swap, but I could simply swap a sorry slide to confirm, and the swap would be done. And so here, it's very very elementary level of information. It confirms that you are on the DAP, the exact action that you're going to do. I've raised the level of, of awareness from zero to one, and I can move in confidence, right? Case number one, the case of uh, app, uh, app verification, contract verification. And we will explain later how this works. So I'm not going to perform the action. Now, let's go to the second use case, which I think is the most fascinating one, right? Is the case of abusive permission, which usually is not visible or understandable to the user. And to, to make the case very, very clear, I'm going to show you how it looks on Zango um, uh, when something bad happens. And I'm going to show you another popular wallet, which I'm not going to, to name, but you're going to recognize it. And you will see the experience there, and I will let you judge the difference. And it speaks for itself. So I'm going to tell you a little story. Let's assume you're discovering a new minting site, right, for a new NFT collection, and they tell you go mint, right, uh, that NFT, right, and it's going to to ask you to click on a link, and you're you're arriving on that app. So uh, you're going to see now Etherscan as the interface, but I will ask you a little bit of imagination. Imagine that the interface is not that interface, but that the contract is going to do all those things. So. Let's assume that this malicious application is actually using not a minting contract, but the, the wrap Ethereum contract is going to ask you to actually uh, uh, withdraw all the wrapped Ethereum that is on your, on your wallet, right? So I'm going to, uh, to uh, the, the interface that enables me to interact with that, uh, with that section. Of course, the user would not see that, he would just have uh, it would just have a link. And now I'm going to wallet connect my, uh, my wallet right here. So I'm now connecting innocently to that uh, application. And the app is going to ask me to do a certain number of things. So here I'm going to simply uh, you know, paste uh, an address and the app is going to want to withdraw, let's assume, 100 uh, with from my wallet, right? Up to 100 with from my wallet. So I'm getting the, uh, I'm approving the action. And what happens there? 
uh, I'm getting a red message that I'm going to give an aggressive access to uh, of width to uh, to that application, right? I can I can tap on that and understand that a bit better. But the the better thing is let's assume that I'm missing that. Let's assume that I'm going to say all right, whatever they say it's red, but never mind. I'm going to actually approve that. So let's approve it. I'm entering to a second step, right? Asking me. Do you really want to approve that asset? You are going to give a permission that is really dangerous. Do you want to approve it anyway? So, you know, think about it as someone, you know, driving a car, exceeding speed, and you, you give him a chance to not die at that moment. And you ask him again, do you really want to die? And the guy still can go at that speed. Well, this is exactly what we're doing here. We're introducing a second step of validation, which I think is uh, uh, really welcome in those type of cases. So that's how Zango behaves. Let me show you in comparison, in the same case, how another wallet would behave, another popular wallet would behave. So I'm going to connect that other wallet. It's done. And I'm going to approve for that same address, 100 width. All right. So this is how it looks like, right, in that popular wallet. You guys tell me, but there is zero chance that a normal human being and even someone that is working on it 24 seven can really understand what's going on here. It's impossible. You understand that you're giving some sort of permission, but you're not understanding the danger. And more importantly, you can very, very simply confirm it in one step, right? And this information is obviously overwhelming to most people and there is a reason that all those billions have been lost is because what like those and others by the way they're not alone would present the information in a way that is unactionable so that's that really that's those are the two cases uh, if you want to try zango today uh, with verified apps you can try it on uniswap you can try it also on OpenSea. Uh, you can try it on on collabland you can try it on a few more apps that we are introducing uh, uh, also very soon if you uh, looking at our social media account, you will see sometimes that we are uh, updating with new contracts all the time. And there is more innovation that is going to come to ClearSign. ClearSign is just an umbrella activity that is going to make transactional experience way simpler, way safer, way, way more readable to reduce the number of cases where you can make a mistake radically and, and going to protect you in order of magnitude compared with what is existing today. Um, I, th I think that's it. I'm I'm done with the demo, um, and Ari, I'm handing it back to you. Maybe we can switch already to tell or start, take some questions. Great, thank you so much, Oriel, and great job on the demo. It's always great to see when the the live ones work without any issues. Um, this really is a game changer, right, for the industry. And I know that we're all very excited at Zenko about this. We're all very excited that you're here to to not just learn about it with us, but now talk to us about it. Um, so now let's turn it over to the Q&A led by our co-founder and CTO, Tal, who's also the head of our Zengo X research team. If you have more questions, I already see a few great ones. I also have one or two DM'd me, continue to put those below uh, or raise your hand if you'd like to ask personally. Um, and I'll actually get started with the first question that we have, which is, Tal, uh, what are the common types of Web3 fraud that we see impacting users? And then sort of like a follow-up is, how do we solve these with clear sign? Okay, this is uh, really what we came here to learn today. Before we jump to Web3, I just want to put an extra reminder that uh, as we well started, uh, Web3 is not the only danger out there. It's, uh, there are countless cases of users losing uh, their fund due to classic crypto mishaps that are related to the private key, losing it, fake support, give me your seed, uh, scams, um, and the list just goes on, on and on, malware. But, and this is what we're already solving with our MPC that is uh, uh, distributing the private key and preventing it from being a single point of failure, uh, which is, very interesting and very important by itself. But today we're going to talk about Web3 mainly and ClearSign. So the solution, uh, ClearSign, uh, really uh, 
put focus on the problem itself. The signing is not clear. You're blindly signing some uh, opaque, obscure uh, uh, buffers that most people, 99% uh, of, of a, a Web3 user, are not capable of understanding. And uh, the, when you go into a, a DAP, into an interface, they suggest you uh, what to sign. So in one way, crypto liberates you because you're in the driver's seat and you decide what to sign. But if you cannot see what you're signing on, are you really free? So what is very important is to understand what you're signing on. And this is ex exactly clear sign. So how attackers uh, abuse that is by giving you all kinds of uh, signatures. So just signatures that are bad for you, uh, usually with rogue DAP. So either the DAP is rogue to begin with, and it's a phishing DAP, and then they try to find all kinds of clever ways to it always comes down to to, uh, to give control over your assets, either by sending them directly, giving approval as an access to it, given uh, some other way of means of access to it by using uh, offline signature and so on and so forth. But in the end of the day, there's a lot of uh, different vectors to persuade the user to give access uh, to the wrong a contract or the, the wrong uh, address. And uh, this is what it all comes down to. So how are we fighting that uh, with clear sign? So the first thing you have to do is to make clear for the user what they're signing on. So first, it needs to be clear what the functionality uh, is going to be. And the good, uh, uh, the good insight and the, uh, that although there can be countless types of, uh, of uh, uh, transactions, uh, they are, the important ones are the ones that transfer in control and they are relatively standardized. So we're making them highly clear. I think you saw some of them in Uriel's demo when you are approving something, when you're directly sending something, it becomes clear to you. And this is the first uh, uh, pillar of security, making it clear. Then the second uh, pillar is to uh, is to provide some more uh, context to it. So additional thing, for example, to make it concrete, when you are approving uh, some, uh, you're approving. Uh, an app or a, an address to uh, giving access to you, one of your NFTs, it's highly, uh, it's very hard to the user to see if this address is good or not. But for example, there are, could be all kinds of hints. For example, if this address is not really a contract, it's a address that is a, maintained by the private key, EOA, private uh, address and not the contract. This is highly unusual and should be flagged. And additionally, if you're sending something directly to, a, to an address and so on and so forth. So to make a long story short, it's visibility and then enhancing uh, that visibility with extra data and reaching it so the user can get an informed, uh, into informed decision if it's right or not, and also providing some baseline of what is expected or not and highlighting when it's unexpected. Thank you so much, Tal. I'd like to take a question uh, from a live person. So if anybody would like to ask it personally, uh, feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself. Uh, otherwise, I'll start jumping to some of the other great questions that we have in the chat. Go to the chat. Okay, great. So then let's move down and see some of the questions in the chat. One of the first questions was, um, question, was read for things like unlimited access or for limited access to WEF, uh, wrapped E? What determines what type of state changes are high risk? Mm. Uh, this is a great question. And uh, also uh, one of the challenges that we have that 
uh, the industry the industry seemed to use um, some uh, really weird constructions that are not secure to begin with to uh, it becomes customary that in order to use even uh, uh, any app I mean an app you have to give uh, a proof to all of your assets in that that's how major uh, major exchanges work, different Uniswap, OpenSea, and so on and so forth. So in that harsh environment, it's hard, uh, you know, and in a naive world, I would say, uh, in an ideal world, even say, I said, this is, this is bad, right? But uh, the challenge here is to strike that good balance between uh, a lot of fatigue for the user, and things that are actionable. So in the case of Uriel demo, uh, it really, uh, red is for unusual and dangerous behavior. Uh, and in this case, uh, Uriel using Ether Etherscan had uh, granted access to a, a private address, an address that is controlled uh, by a private key. Uh, and not to a contract as expected. And this is highly dangerous behavior because we cannot know uh, how this uh, address will uh, use that uh, permission to OIL's uh, fund. And this was the, uh, the gist of the many attacks, including uh, uh, the Badger DAO for NFT and so on, and the Badger DAO for AC20 and a lot of NFT uh, hacks, including to uh, Seth Green, just to mention a uh, known name, and uh, that was uh, the case there. So in that case, we're, we thread, we're 99% sure that this, this is something you should be very, very uh, careful about. And uh, something more yellow is like sending, transferring uh, uh, funds directly to, to someone which can be relevant in, in some context, but the context is, are you really trying to send someone to, to a, another user and not, you know, trade or something like that? And in this case, we still need the user uh, awareness for the, for the context and what they are trying to do. And as we go on, we will be uh, we'll deploy more and more things that can uh, extract the context of what the user is trying to do. And uh, this will also enable us to, uh, to alert even in cases that can be sometimes okay, but with the right context, we will be able to give more and more, uh, more and more into that red experience of uh, alerting and in the same manner we're working on adding more and more to the green experience so you can feel uh, trusted uh, uh, you can trust more and more applications and more and more smart contracts that's a perfect transition to the next question which before the question i have to say we have had a few comments from folks who are big fans of the slide to approve so good work product team on that decision. Shout out, I know we have at least somebody from product in here. Um, the next question is, how do dApps actually get verified to get that green check mark? This is great, the question. So we started off uh, in, uh, by having a, a program in which uh, uh, dApps can reach out to us, and also we are reaching out to them, but reach out to us, I think uh, one of the great use cases and, and ways that users get hacked. The scammers using FOMO for a NFT, people are excited about some sort of a, a upcoming NFT and it's part of the usual marketing that you want to create anticipation and so on for the launch of your great NFT. Okay, and then scammers abuse that and say, okay, it started and then you rush to get to it and uh, throw caution to the wind and just want to mint before uh, that limited supply of NFT. And in this case, it uh, can be highly beneficial uh, to protect your own brand, your own NFT uh, by integrating with us 
talk to us. There's a, in, in the blog, there is a way to reach us. And, uh, and so we can enlist your NFT in secure minting. And that way your user, uh, should they use Zengo, they can get guarantee and uh, that trusted green feeling that actually they're, uh, they're going to mint the right NFT and all your marketing uh, efforts goes uh, into the right customer and not being abused by a scammer. Also, uh, just to add, to, to add on top of, uh, of, uh, of Tal's uh, great answer, uh, obviously we're not going to just add, you know, this process is not just going to be manual, we're going to be able to work at scale. There's a few partnerships that are uh, going to be announced uh, soon. And uh, also we are opening ClearSign to welcoming uh, third parties that enables us to add context, to add elements of information uh, and make this experience truly unique, truly outstanding, at the same time, simple and safe. So we'll be able to, uh, it will be a combination of both a manual uh, effort, but also efforts at scale that's going to be highly automated and, and highly monitored, right? So it's, it's not enough to just add the contracts, you also have to be able to monitor them for changes and things like that. And, um, and again, I think the number one purpose of that effort here is to raise the awareness of what is happening and to make sure and to help the user think a little bit more than what today is happening, meaning nothing. Right, and so by doing so, uh, avoiding traps. I had a, an experience this week. I, I, I'm not sure I want to name the name, but a very, very, very high profile brand, extremely well known, that is um, doing a minting for their uh, collection. And you know, everything looked kosher and fine and well designed and everything. And I arrived at the moment of the approval only to discover that I was not giving approval to a contract, but to an address, which is highly verboten. You never, never want that to happen. And so I stopped right there and I would not have found that if I was not going to use uh, Zango. And if you're interested to know, to know who privately, I'd be happy to share the information, but that is a real life case that has happened like two days ago. And so those things are happening now today uh, in 2022. And so we cannot wait for them so, to be solved by someone else, which we want to solve them today. Yeah, that was very exciting to see clear sign in action where we discovered something that seemed kind of strange and now we know that every zengo user will see that as soon as they if they were to connect to that dap um i think we have time for for maybe one last question um so i think i have a nice one to close it out because it also captures the, the the mix of complexity between everything going on behind the scenes kind of under the hood and the very simple user experience of so green you know yellow red um, creating this design language is essential for the average user who doesn't understand anything going on, nor, nor should they have to understand what's going on behind the scene. So last question is, if a user is interested in looking at more details for a given transaction, so a user who probably has a little bit more experience and understands crypto, what kind of additional info can be exposed to the end user? Um, they're curious how much information is bubbled up during the clear sign process. That's a great question. Uh... Clearly, from an advanced, very advanced users. Uh, so, usually, I think most uh, a user just want you know. Even what we're bubbling up is uh, you know touching the uh, pushes the limits of users' uh, understanding. But we try to keep things as simple as possible, but not simpler than that. So. We try to, you know, not push too much information. I think, in a way, too much information uh, makes things worse for the average uh, user. And we try not to, you know, uh, bubble up everything that is risky. And in a way, it's kind of remove the responsibility from us and throw it to the user. You understand what uh, you make out of that. So uh, our philosophy is not to do that. But having said that, uh, we are, first of all, in a, every case that you are, you, there's this informational uh, uh, icon on, on the alert. So if you want to learn more what triggered that alert, you can see that. 
and we're uh, planning to add more advanced view for uh, advanced users that want to take a look for themselves under the hood but uh, our main focus is to uh, try to give the bottom line right away for, for the user so they can uh, so they don't need to dig it up and decide the, from themselves we are trying to uh, make everything as accessible as possible we, we, you, are big, we are a big Sorry, fan of Zango. No, no, I was just just complete. We're a big fan of Less Is More uh, here at Zango. And uh, I, I don't know who has the question, but let's be honest. Is there, do you think, that, is there anyone here who actually reads the complete uh, sign signature message? Uh, I, I think there are very few people who do that, even if it was exposed. So we decided for now not to expose it. What you can do, though, is, as you can see, uh, we're giving you the access to the uh, on-chain and the explorer, and you can go see what's going on there. Uh, but we we decided to we're thinking for the majority and, and not for experts. <laughs>